Alright guys, so today I'm making a poolish, or earlier I made a poolish, with a shit ton of yeast. It's 50 grams of King Arthur bread flour, 50 grams of water, and 2 grams of active dry yeast. This is for demonstration purposes only. Normally I'd probably use 0.1 to 0.2 grams of yeast, or 0.25% active dry yeast. Um, but I added a lot more to kind of make a time-lapse video or attempt to. I had about a two-hour window and so I started filming this. You'll notice that at some times I changed the camera angle or I stopped and started recording. That was because I know there's a time limit on how long my camera can record at once and I didn't want it to shut off in the middle of it so I kind of did the justice of stopping the recording and starting again pretty much instantaneously. Um, but the outline of this video is to show that what happens to this poolish is what happens to your dough behind closed doors, basically. Um, it starts with a lag phase after you mix the dough. So right now, it's probably went through, going through, it's 15 to 20 minutes of looking like there's really not much happening. You might start to notice some air bubbles forming on the wall of the jar. And now it's probably leaving its lag phase and starting to rise. It starts slow and then it starts to pick up the pace as it goes on. Um, so basically that's what happens to your dough. You mix your dough and it will have some sort of a lag phase. Um, it'll take a while before anything starts really happening. And then it kind of enters this growth phase where it keeps growing in size and rising and it basically fills with the carbon dioxide. The yeast and good bacteria consume the sugar in the flour. Um, when the flour and water mix, the amylase enzyme will act as a catalyst to convert the complex sugars and starches and flour into simple sugars that the yeast can eat. That's why you don't really need to add honey or sugar to a poolish or to a dough. The main purposes of those should be to add browning when you have an oven at a low temperature. And by low, I mean about 500 Fahrenheit. And that means you need to add some sugar or diastatic malt powder or honey or molasses to add some browning because you don't want the cheese to be burnt before the dough has any color to it. Um, so now you can see a visual rise. Uh, the rubber band is where the pool is started at and now it's at about a 10 to 25 percent rise and you'll all also notice the structure. It has kind of a dome on top. That applies to your dough too. I mean essentially this pool is, is a dough. So it rises and rises and it gets to its kind of breaking point. For some doughs, that might be a 50% rise, it might be a 100% rise, it might be a 200% rise, as in it might triple. Um, so you basically can't just go by whether it doubled or not, like a lot of people think. You kind of have to watch your dough um, do what it's going to do in your circumstances. So while it's rising, there will be a dome to it. And this one does a little more than doubling. You also notice the side walls have quite a bit of air bubbles going on now. Um, but yeah, the yeast will consume this the simple sugars once they've been converted, and they will give off carbon dioxide. They will also reproduce. This is me just getting a better camera angle to show what it looks like really from the side. Of course, you can't see the bottom of the jar, but it's probably at about a 75% rise right now and you can clearly see that doming over there um, if you're going to use a poolish sometimes it's good to look at it like uh, to know when to use it and why you want to use it at a certain time I recommend you at least let it get a 50% rise as in half as high as it originally was on top of where it is so Half as high as the rubber band is, that height above the jar, or above the um, rubber band or string, at least 
to 100%, basically when it doubles um, and there's a doming to it. If you use it at those points, you'll get a good bit of flavor from the pre-ferment of the poolish, and you'll get a lot of leavening that way. Then it will get to its peak, which should be coming up fairly soon, where you start to see it go from that dome up top, that rounded dome, to a more flat shape. And then eventually it'll become concave, and the center will be lower than the sides, and it will drop and eventually get all the way back down to the rubber band. Um, but the life cycle of this poolish is literally exactly the same as your dough. So you might say, then why don't, why is that not a dough? Well, typically you're not going to do 100% hydration for a dough. You might if you're doing a ciabatta or focaccia maybe. Um, most of the times you're not. And the real difference is the salt. I mean, of course, some doughs, you use sugar, oil, egg, milk, stuff like that. But in a flour, water, salt, yeast recipe, the only thing missing here is the salt. Salt's used to control the fermentation and tighten the gluten network. But anyways, you might have saw a big bubble on the top pop. That's where, and another one. And now that dome is kind of getting lost, and you can see it slowly start to fall. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the whole decline of this, um, but I will include some pictures of what it looks like in the aftermath. Um, it's getting a lot less rounded. Like right now would probably be the perfect time to use your poolish because since it started its decline, you know, it's that's all flavor for your dough right there. And you'll get some leavening because it's basically hungry and needs more flour to eat. And when you make a dough, you're feeding that colony of yeast you got going there. Just like a sourdough starter, basically. Um, flavor profiles will be different than sourdough with the poolish. But yeah. So, this is still in its declining phase. But the main thing I wanted to show you guys is that your dough does not just infinitely expand and expand and expand. And if you wait longer, it gets area and area. Eventually, it'll get super dense, it'll get super runny, and your gluten network will be gone. Um, so yeah, here's a few pictures of the aftermath. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. I'm on my way to 1,000 subscribers. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.